Hi, I'm Kayla. I'm Alyssa. And this is The Christie Club. I actually haven't read a lot of audiobooks, but most audiobooks I read are guys who are narrating, right? Yeah. And then so they do all the voices, mm -hmm. and when the guy voices, they sound kind of normal, but when they do the girl voices, they just sound so annoying. They're like, oh, no way! <laughs> that is I had no idea! And it's like, I feel like I could do a guy voice better than, like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, my name is Serge Superintendent Battle. <laughs> so, but I just, like, I want, like, the, like, it just feels like very out of it and the girls feel very like characters and the guys feel more normal uh -huh. when if it was a girl narrating which wouldn't work for most stories if the narrator is obviously like the point of view it's mostly from is a guy understanding of being a guy yeah. but anyways but if i feel like there was a female narrator which i haven't really seen much and they do a guy the guy feels more funny right but then yeah. the girl voices feel more natural so you take them and then seriously or not yeah yeah and so then that like when you're reading it, it takes me out every time there's a female. Like, I can't, I can't feel or, like, connect to the female characters as, as much because their voice sounds like this. You know what? I have had the same experience, <sighs> but with some narrators, mm -hmm. particularly David Suchet, mm -hmm. there were some where I literally forgot that it was a man narrating. Really? And That's I was like, good. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I can't, like, I can't believe they're the same person. I was like, what in the world? Um, that's again, good. if all characters also have, like, their own, if all characters are, like, kind of silly or mm -hmm. really, like, I don't know, emphatic, maybe their accent or something, then it's kind of easier to, like, ex for your brain to kind of accept that transition, whereas yeah. if they were narrating, like, my normal voice, mm -hmm. this is just my normal voice, and now I'm changing my voice, then, of course, it's very noticeable. Um, but yeah, no, I've definitely had that experience where I'm like, why are they doing that? It is especially with, like, female characters. But I love oh. it, I love it when there's a female character whose voice is lower for a woman. Ooh, so then yes. it's like a guy, it was, it was, I love that, it's just so funny. On, in cards on the table, you know if a guy is, uh, narrating this. Mm -hmm. And I actually don't know, because I'm not reading this on audiobook, but you know her voice is going to be like, Hi, my name is Anne. Yeah. <laughs> Anne Meredith. I didn't murder anybody. <laughs> so that brings me to, we just read another eight chapters of Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie. <laughs> so this past week, we read chapters oh, 14 <laughs> through chapter 21, eight chapters. And I think the best way is to just go in order of mm -hmm. our thoughts as we read. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, so starting with chapter 14, the third visitor, mm -hmm. um, we had superintendent, he pays a, a visit to Miss Meredith. Yeah. Um, very just kind of casual, they just kind of go through all of the So uh, boring, basic my info. opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we, but, uh, some things that I noted sure. were, uh, Rhoda's aunt developed cancer mm -hmm. um and miss meredith was like a companion to the aunt mm -hmm. um so i was like wait a second miss meredith could have had access to certain drugs because i mentioned like morphia which is what we know as morphine and i was like maybe she could have gotten a hold of that or, or done something with that um and then at the very end of the chapter mm -hmm. we we see that um Rhoda realizes that uh, Meredith forgot to mention their stay at some place. Yeah. Um, and she's all like, well, why didn't you mention that? And she's like, oh, well, you know, I just thought it didn't really matter very much. And then at the very end, she turns on the radio. Rhoda turns on the radio. Mm -hmm. And, like, on the radio they announce, um, you've just heard some play called Why Do You Tell Me Lies, Baby? And I was like, oh, <laughs> she definitely lying. That is a clue if I know a clue. She is so lying. Uh, anyway, that was my, my thought. I have um, no thoughts on that chapter. I was like, <laughs> boring. Who cares about superintendent battle? There's nothing here. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was stuff, but it, I felt like all of it was just setting up stuff. So, anyways... That's all I had to say. Okay, well then. Um, then we move on to Major Despard, and Ooh. Poirot is waiting to catch him at the right moment on a train. Yeah. No, not a train. It was like a bus or something. Um, and Despard was shadowed by a police officer, and he knows it. And he shares this to Poirot, mm -hmm. which kind of shows that he holds Poirot in his confidence. And I was like, that's interesting of mm -hmm. you. Um, I don't know what Poirot did to gain that confidence, but, I mean, I guess, mm -hmm. who knows. Um... And then it was just, they had some dialogue there, and I guess Poirot got more out of it than the readers did. 
Actually, I'm, yeah. I'm quite sure that he did. Um, <laughs> That's what I like listening about Perro, though. It's like, wait, what is he seeing that I'm not, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then you go to, you're, like, re- looking through it to, like, try to understand the clues. Mm-hmm. And he, again, uh, he quizzed Despard on the contents of Shaitana's room. Yes. Um, again, who knows what's in there. Um, we do find out later, though. Um, and then Despard shares that Shaitana was a spiritual blackmailer. Um, he basically extorted personal scandals from women just for his own delight and enjoyment. Yeah. Um, you ready to move on to chapter 16? Oh, wait, no, there was one more. One more thing? Okay. There was one more thing, yeah. Um, Poirot was being his, you know, conceited little self. Um, <laughs> he took some some offense to this one comment that Despard said. He was all like, we all make mistakes. And Poirot was, was like, not me. Some make more than others. Oh, and he did mention he was like, only one time. And I was like, I know that one time. Yeah, that you- story was... Yep. Mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he referenced the chocolate box. He was I like, know, that was the last funny. time Maiden Error was only like 28 years ago. I was like, well then, okay. Um, no, I found, I found that hilarious. Yeah. Um, all I'm right. proud that I got the reference. Yes, yes. Nice. Me too. So then chapter 16, the evidence of Elsie Bat. I liked this. This was like, I did like this one. Um, I love how Agatha Christie, she never shies away. She just tells you if a person's hot or not. <laughs> and she was like, sir, and in my notes, it's just written, sir, it's sergeant. Yes. I was about to say sergeant. Sergeant O'Connor is hot. And then it's underlined. Because <laughs> that's what I got from the first paragraph. But I just find it so funny when she does that for some reason. Yep, it's like, oh, ladies, man. I feel like in secrets. books, like nowadays, like. Probably they don't, like, just come out and be like, this person was so hot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, my God, that reminds me of reading Pride and Prejudice like, last year. Yeah. Because, like, you would get such such a little description of a, a character's, like, mm-hmm. physical appearance, right? Mm-hmm. It would just be like, he was a rather attractive man, or he was pretty unattractive, <laughs> or, like, she had big ears, or something like that. And that was it. And I was like, oh, what? Like, that doesn't help me. Um... But yeah, no, that was really funny. I really like that it was just, there was like two random characters we've never met before. Yeah. And it was just their conversation and it felt really real and funny. The characters um, were fun. And so, yeah, I actually had a good time. It was a good break from the book. As, it as was. We, we mentioned earlier, uh, it can be a little hard to read several chapters all at once. Oh, yeah. um, it's, it's so much information and like things that might be clues but aren't really thrown at you that it is a is actually a lot of information. Mm-hmm. If, and if you're trying to solve it, I don't know, I'm a little overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it felt like a good break. Um, and let's see, what did we learn? So we learned this? about uh, Dr. Robert's possible past murder. Mm-hmm. And it's, he probably, I'm going to say probably, murdered Miss Craddock's? Craddock's? Cra- Cra- yes. Mm-hmm. Her husband. Mm-hmm. Because... Because it's in, it's insinuated that he was getting too close to her, but it seemed that she was the one kind of hitting on him, and he was just like trying to be professional. But the, maybe yes, I mean that's, that's what people say. Yeah. Yes, and um, and the husband was not having it, and he broke out in an outrage one day, and he was like, "I'm gonna report you, and you're gonna lose your job." Yeah, and so he had to calm him down course be like oh no the woman's just hysterical you know how women get yeah. <laughs> oh and, yeah. and then <laughs> um and then what do you know a few days or a few weeks later the man dies of anthrax yeah very suspicious um i thought it was funny he the maid who's wa- listening to all of this he goes and washes his hands after and he's, something about washing his hands comes out, and I was like, mm, I feel like that's symbolism. Like, he's tr- he's trying to wash his hands of the matter. Maybe. But then I was like, wait a second. The guy got poisoned by shaving, oh. and he went to wash his hands. He was in the bathroom. He could have just, right after, poisoned whatever the shaving thing. Ooh, you're pinpointing the moment of So that, I'm like, he had the... He, that was the moment he did it. Damn! And then I was Kayla. like, oh, that's why she put in that he's washing his hands. And I was so proud. <laughs> nice. Great job. No, I seriously totally missed that. Um, so I, mean, I, I think, it, I think he was... totally did murder 
The, oh, the guy. Yes. And maybe also the wife, too, because she died later. And she did Egypt. die later, yes. And and he could have, like, not actually given her immunities to something, and then she got it and went over there and got sick. Mm-hmm. It's implied. Anyways. Um, oh, and then I was interested in how the maid was portrayed or depicted. Yeah. Because um, she was a working-class woman, um, and it felt like the author was being a little too obvious in making her seem uneducated because mm-hmm. some of the the dialogue lines were like yeah she like couldn't pronounce a word yeah she was like oh but they what used word long it was? words like it was like consistent and then but then she other words she used were like words i could barely pronounce but i can do consistent just fine <laughs> and so i was like this is a little weird yeah so i was like i don't know how this is this isn't rubbing me the right way but, yeah um Though yeah. I did find it funny when S- Sergeant O'Connor was like, I feel like I've known you. He's like trying to get information out <laughs> yes. of her. And he's like, I feel like I've known you forever. Can I just call you Elsie? And she goes, no. <laughs> and Miss Brad. <laughs> yes. And he was just like, okay, fine then. Um, and then at the end he, is, he leaves and she's like, oh, is there any chance we could maybe see each other again? And he's all like, no. Probably not. Our paths won't be crossing. And she's like, hmm. And then at the end, it's like, oh, well, there's always Fred. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess there's there's a Fred in everyone's life. Good for Fred. <laughs> okay, so next chapter. Um, the evidence of Rhoda Dawes. Yeah, and so this is Anne's friend, and she goes to talk to Miss Oliver. Mm-hmm. And we get to find out that what ha- what was the thing that Anne was like lying about? Or- something that yeah, something that Mrs. Oliver had said had like really bugged Anne because it reminded her of this um, experience she had where a woman was poisoned in a house she was staying at, and Ms. Yeah. Rhoda's kind of vague, um, and Mrs. Oliver doesn't really press for details. Sure. Um, so it's still kind of a mystery, but that is most likely the scandal in. Um, in Miss Meredith's life. Yes, she probably murdered this woman. To put it bluntly. Yeah. She, like, switched um, out whatever she was, like, uh, drinking something for poison, and she died. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was thinking about. Uh, my mind went back again to the, the aunt with cancer, and I was like, maybe It wasn't drugs. that aunt, though. It was it, no, I know, but, like, me. using, I don't know, drugs somehow. I mean, she did leave the job before the nurse t- took over, so she probably didn't have access to... Such drugs, but you never know. I'm just sure. Saying. But what what um, I think was the most fun about this chapter was again we get more Miss Oliver and we get more like meta stuff because Miss mm-hmm. Oliver is talking about writing books uh-huh. and the difficulties you just feel of being a writer. Agatha telling you talking about writing books and she talks about how it's hard work mm-hmm. like it's really a job yeah. and um and it, and <laughs> she also talked about um her experience with like a secretary or something and I was like yeah. Yeah. Why and she, she says she has an in, inferiority complex. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, I, and the thing about the secretary is that she didn't like having a competent secretary because she <laughs> felt bad about herself. Mm-hmm. And But then having an incompetent secretary is no good either. Yep, yep. And I just found that funny. I was, I was like, like, I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And oh, and then she mentioned how um, it's difficult to get to like, uh, to reach a high word count. And yeah. I was like, well, and she's like, so then I have to throw in another murder and just, you know, make the plot longer. And I was like, well, you could just, you know, add some, like, elaboration and, like, description in your dialogue tags, you know? Because she's, a lot of the times, the dial- lines of dialogue aren't accompanied with, like, she said or he yeah. said or whatever. And I was like, you could, you could add some more stuff there, like, describe how they looked or, you know, because she does add it um, when it's important. And then that kind of made me zoom in a little bit more every time there was a moment where yeah. someone said something quickly or slowly and I was like hmm so now I'm kind of paying a little bit more attention there I I kind of like what a point that was put on about uh, her writing books being hard work is that like she needs the money and I was like I feel like because Agatha Christie wrote so many books. So oh many my gosh. So many. And then when you look at the dates, it's like multiple books a year. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how are you just fit one book after book after book? Like, mm-hmm. that's crazy. And then when she talks about, like, having something about money, I was like, uh, because she, maybe she had to write so many books because she they wanted the cash coming in. Yeah. And, and she's, like, the one uh, getting money for herself. And so I was like... 
I don't know what my thought on that was, but I thought that was interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was, I was, I mean, I, I kind of thought that, um, she was so prolific because she had so many different ideas. Because mm -hmm. I remember her mentioning before, she's like, well, there are, like, five different ways that this person could have committed this murder. Yeah. Or five different motives. And she'd be like, oh, and then just, like, all these different ideas just come to me. And I, you know, like, it kind of gets difficult to, like, sort them out and choose one. And I was like, well, that's probably how she got, um, like, all these different ideas for, for the plots. Yeah, I, I also think that... With her saying that writing books is hard work, is probably not something she always enjoyed, but, like, something she kind of had to do. Hmm. Um, and Especially... I thought that's... Looking at an author at a way, like, this is their livelihood, and so so they're not always enjoying writing. It's not always as glamorized as we expect. Yeah, and then so the, seeing that about Agatha Christie, I think is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and cool. It feels like she's kind of letting us into her own life. Yeah. Which is really nice. All right, then chapter 18, Tea Interlude. Um, Mrs. Lorimer and Miss Meredith chat over some tea. I love uh, chatting over tea. Me too. We're doing it right now. Yep, um, we <laughs> both have tea with us right now. So yeah. fun. Mm. I feel like Miss Marple sometimes with tea. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, never mind. <laughs> Maybe uh, Agatha Christie was a reason for my tea obsession. Maybe. Actually, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> that and my mother. <laughs> okay, so she, Miss Lorimer and Anne, they go have tea, and they talk, and Miss Lorimer's kind of weird. Yeah, there was a little weird... I didn't Ooh, understand okay. that. I read, this is what I, my theory on it. Uh -huh. Miss Lorimer is talking about how she's old and Anne's young, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, hmm. And so, usually, I feel like when people are talking about that, they're like, you need to keep living, I'm okay. Like, they're going to sacrifice themselves. And I was like, oh, what if my guess is that Miss Lorimer thinks that Anne did it mm -hmm. or somehow knows that Anne did it or knows that she did do it and thinks Anne did it. <laughs> Anyways, Anne did it. <laughs> but she's like, I'm going to protect you because it's another woman and she's young and she needs to live. Really? That's that's what my guess is going to happen. Oh, wow. Miss Lorimer struck me as a much more cold woman or somewhat more detached. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's, that's interesting. That's interesting what theory. I was like, that's my prediction. Um, because so funny, Miss... Not funny. So intro weird. Everybody else like gets all this backstory and like we're finding about yeah. all these lies they're telling. Miss Lorimer, n barely anything, yeah. nothing. And so she has to. Something has else has to be going on to like one. There has to be a reason this character is in there. Mm -hmm. And two, but she's. It doesn't seem like she's a murderer at all. Like, they're not putting anything in that would say she might be a murderer. We got nothing on her. Yeah. So, I think that's very interesting. Strange. Yeah. Kind of suspicious. Suspicious, but, like, if it was her, it would just come out of totally nowhere. Right? So, I feel like she has another device, plot device in the story, other than being a murderer. I see. I see. That's a very, very interesting theory. I, I don't know. Something's up with Miss Lormer. And it, who knows what it is. Also, um, Miss uh, Meredith and Rhoda talk after the tea session. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of discover their um, inner monologue and how they're kind of critical of one another. Yeah. But it seems like this was kind of uh, provoked by their mutual, their interest in um, Despard. And they're kind of yes. like, oh, he might just like her. I'm kind of glad that, you know, we're not all together and talking and then... Rhoda was like, um, oh, she's totally not the kind of girl that he would be good with. Into. You know? yeah. yeah. So I found that weird. I didn't like it. Also, I couldn't totally understand what was happening for some reason. <laughs> and after I read it twice, I was like, nah, I'm not. <laughs> Maybe that was bad on Agatha for making it confusing. There was a lot of, like, internal thoughts that I thought, thought were being spoken out loud, but I didn't actually oh. know what they meant. Yeah, I see. So that was my bad. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I mean, I I kind of thought, like, oh, so, like, we're going to see a different side of Mer Miss Meredith now. Yeah. Um, but then when no. Rhoda came in with her own, like, thoughts, I was like, oh, okay, no, it's just both of them. But maybe it's kind of, maybe she added Rhoda's thoughts so that it wouldn't make Miss Meredith seem as bad. 
or as critical. So you're still looking at Anne. I am. <laughs> no, no, okay. Yeah. Um. So then the next chapter, all our sleuths come back together again, and they kind of share what they found. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so Colonel Race has been. He found stuff on Major Despard. Mm. First of all, for some reason. He mentions that Despard's a white man, mm-hmm. and then somehow that, like, makes him innocent. Uh-huh. And I was like, ha! I knew it! Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were racist! <laughs> racist all along! Yes. No, it was, it was like he was saying he's a white man as if white meant he was, like, pure. Or, yeah. And then, weird, but I was like, isn't, aren't they all just white people? Yeah! I'm assuming that because it's an Agatha Christie book. Not great, but that doesn't say anything about it. Uh-huh, and I was like, Ugh. um, what, what? And then they, they have this line. What is it? So he says, um, he's a white man battle. And battle responds, incapable of murder, you mean? And Colonel Ray says, incapable of what I'd call murder, yes. And then, uh, battle responds, um, but not incapable of killing a man for what would seem to him good and sufficient reasons. Is that it? And he's like, if so, there would be good and sufficient reasons. So he's defining murder by his own his own criteria. Yeah. Basically. So maybe Despard murdered, but like it was for a good reason. So, so it's, it's fine. not murder. And that reminds me of the message behind and then there were none. Um, yeah. And it's like choosing what you define as murder and, oh, I can't there possibly... One of the characters did that and then there were none. Spoiler! Mm-hmm. It's just the whole thing about defining murder and defining crime in a way that suits you and saying... Well, but, like, and would you say, like, self-defense is murder? Like, if someone's gonna, like, is yes, cr- attacking no. you and then you murder them, but, like, in self-defense, I would be like, that's not... Yes. Murder. But in this case, it's more, it's more infused with, like, racial, um... Oh, yeah, that's the then, then it's... <laughs> because... Nugget. Yeah, because, um, I remember in... And then there were none, again, spoilers, um, there was a character who had murdered a whole bunch of, um... Oh, that made me so uncomfortable yes, reading that book. it was like, uh, there were, um... Natives of Africa or something. I don't they remember were natives. where exactly. Yeah, it was so colonial natives, and Ugh. and the guy was like, "Oh, that's not really murder. They were just natives." Ugh. Like, yeah. So, so it's just so defining, choosing, creating your own definition of and crime that's what, like, of, of, of murder in order to like kind of elevate your rate, your quote unquote race, um, so above bad. above that. Um, and Colonel Race is kind of doing this. And you can still see it in more modern um, modern society, what with, like, uh, like the sentencing disparities between oh, crack yeah. cocaine and powder cocaine. Um, totally kind of random, but you can, was, it's it, still, yes. still in society in, in different ways. Yeah. Just choosing your own definition of crime. Can um, we go on a one tangent about it? Then we're not. Total yes. spoilers. So that character is, like, interesting and kind of fun, but then that's his, that's the murder he committed, right? And it just totally ruins him. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's because we're a more modern audience, but, like, anything that person does is just disgusting mm-hmm. to me now. And then you also have the other, the girl who her murdered the boy, right? Uh-huh. yeah. And but you kind of sympathize with her a little bit, right? Obviously, not good. <laughs> yeah. It's... But she, you have more sympathy for her, but then they just kind of... Maybe this is just the TV show. <laughs> Actually, it might just be the TV. I watched the TV show based off the book. Uh-huh. I read the book, too, obviously. But there's, like, kind of romantic tension between her and him, mm-hmm. right? And it, like, I can't... You can't stand it! It's you just... can't stand it yeah. when that's the kind of person he is. And it's... You're kind of... I feel like... Ugh! And so I can't, I can't enjoy the, like, the romantic tension because of that. Yeah, it's like, oh, girl, why, why, why? No, just like, and it's like, stop, stop. Yes. The entire time. And so that was very an uncomfortable part of the book. Yeah, and it's, it's good, though, because that's, I feel like that's the aim, is to make you uncomfortable with that. Yeah, but I feel like we were supposed to, all of these people, not good people, okay? Mm-hmm. But some people we can kind of sympathize with more, and, like, with the girl, you can kind of almost get there where you're, like, sympathizing with her. And then I feel like we're supposed to sympathize with both of them because they're the people who, like, n- stay till the end, mm-hmm. you know? They stay alive the longest. They have this kind of connection, and you're supposed to be kind of rooting for them, even though they're terrible people. Mm-hmm. 
And then, but I couldn't do any of that. And isn't it? Because his, the thing he did was so horrific. Yes. And wasn't it that the, the ones that stayed alive the longest had the worst crimes or something not like that? Or was it that? he would be the worst crime. That's what I was going to say. No. No, they felt the most guilty. Uh, I think that's what it was. The people who stayed alive felt the most guilty. I think so. Which would mean there was a lot of guilt that he was I don't, not showing. I don't think he was guilty. Maybe it was the worst crime. But then she... But then, she, but then again, also, she would probably be the most likely to kill herself. So... Yes. It's kind it's of a mixture. It's kind of a plot both. thing. Yeah. <sighs> Total tangent, but I needed to get that off my chest. But okay, okay, okay. Back to the story. <laughs> so that's about uh, Despard. They mm-hmm. also kind of move on to say how for Dr. Roberts, he probably killed that lady we are talking about last time. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, no, the husband of the lady. Mm-hmm. But never mind. Anyways, they're like all pretty sure he murdered the guy, uh-huh. but... What we're, the clue that we're supposed to be looking at, right, is that does this, that past murder reflect this murder? And so it's like the same person. Oh, uh, right. And then when you look at that, that past murder is like, because he's going to get, I don't know, it, it doesn't, there's not very many similarities, mm-hmm. so people don't really think it's him. Yeah, so they're like, well, he would be more likely to use germs, it would be uh, harder to trace, he yeah, he's a doctor. poisoned him, well, that would have been done easier. something with the blood, he wouldn't have just gone and stabbed him. Yeah. Um, so that's, they kind of ruled him out. Um, Even and, though we're pretty sure he's a murderer. Yes. Then they move on to who next? Um, oh, there was some social commentary mm-hmm. um, from Poirot on murder and war, which I thought was kind of philosophical. It was, it was interesting. Um, because Poirot says, like, what bugs him the most about murder is that it's not that the Poirot, or yeah. it's not that the, um, like, if the victim, even if the victim deserved their death, the act of murder has a terrible effect on the person who becomes the murderer. Yeah, because then they feel like they have the right to decide who should live and die. Mm-hmm. Especially in times of war, he said. Um, because he yeah. said... Though he, was, he doesn't blame soldiers because he says there's not... You, you're not making that choice. Mm-hmm. You're just doing what your duty, I guess. Yes, it's what it's what people... It's what you're told, right? It's yeah. kind of... Um, he says, once a man is imbued with the idea that he knows who ought to be allowed to live and who ought not, then he is halfway to becoming the most dangerous killer there is. The arrogant criminal who kills not for profit, but for an idea. That reminded me a lot of World War II. It's particularly the Holocaust. And Mm. all the propaganda and how that played such a huge role. Um, and I was like, wow. But this was, this was written before that, which I found even more interesting. Yes. Because, like, that, of course, was relevant Although, throughout. Although, Agatha Christie does have, like, anti-Semitism ideas throughout her books. And stereotypes, yes. Yes, that are not fun. Not at all. But they also, they said the, the, say the, they said the cover of the title, wait, the title of the book. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Yes. They said, let's lay all our cards on the table. And I was like, that's the title! Yeah. It, it was there. Yeah, I was like, oh, I want to draw a little circle around that. just makes me so happy to see it. They all say that they're going to lay all their cards on the table, right? And that means, like, they're showing everything they've learned. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, maybe, Agatha Christie is also talking to us. And she says that. It felt like that to me. Because she's like, I'm laying down all the cards on the table, all the clues. This is what happened. This is what you know. And it's like, it's up to you to solve it. Interesting. And I was like, oh. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I still don't know who it is, <laughs> but it, it made me more excited to solve it, because mm. I felt like, more I engaged. felt like it was a, pro- I, there are books, Agatha Christie writes, where at the very end there was a clue, and you're like, you couldn't have solved it without that clue, Yes, so and it's a to. little, uh, but you know, you get, for the sake of the book, whatever, uh-huh. but I feel like, I hope she doesn't do that in this book, because by saying, like, she's laying all the cards on the table, I feel like she's saying, no, this is all the clues. But does Poirot really lay down any cards? Does he really? He, does. he tells you what he's thinking he about. He tells you what they are. He says they're all very low numbers. But he doesn't necessarily lay them all out for you. So he, he doesn't explain them, them no. but he lays them there. Yeah. Um, Poirot always has the most vague clues. Yes. 
But we get to learn the results of his uh, interrogation surrounding or about the surroundings of the suspects when he asks them yeah. uh, to recite like whatever they saw in the room. Um, so he yeah, that's interesting. So he basically uh, gets a good idea of their mind. Um, and he says, like, Dr. Roberts is a keen observer. Mrs. Yes. Lorimer has the power of concentration. So she's Major... focused on one thing, but not what's going around around, around her, which is me. <laughs> and Major Despard, who's kind of neither, um, he's... He notices things that appeal to him. Yeah. Um, he sees what he wants to see. Yes. And now all we have to do is wait for him to, uh, po- to present the same questions to Miss Meredith. And then yeah. we can deduce... And Alyssa is so excited. She's (laughs) totally set. I am so ready for that. (laughs) On it being Miss Meredith. (laughs) Next chapter? The evidence of Miss Luxmore. Ooh, okay. One, the house is really messy, and he makes a point to point that out, and I was like... It's really dirty. Sure. (laughs) Messy, dirty. I'm... Unclean. It's just... Okay, but he also said that another time or he I felt like it happened it cut came up another time too oh, I can't he remember was asking, when he was like oh is that person untidy yeah he asked yes. if a lady was untidy and I was like that is out of nowhere that's got to be important yes so he asked if a lady was untidy mm-hmm. this person has an untidy house mm-hmm. and then he's asking about people's surroundings in the house and what they notice about it and I'm like what is with all this house stuff and how tidy it is and I feel like that's a clue but I I have no idea what it could mean any ideas that that sounds brilliant I thought I thought in this chapter particularly it was just Poirot being Poirot and saying like oh like what what, what oh, a dirty I locker that could just I should be just that. clean like he just it's kind of his urge <laughs> to clean it could just be him being like oh and like oh I just need to it's also like oh he's gonna be setting everything straight right mm-hmm. um but yes, no, before, in the I previous chapter. I feel like chapter. it's a clue. Okay, who did he ask about who was untidy? Oh, what person man. was it? Ah, that's a good question. I feel like, who, what chapter? Oh, okay, here it is. Yes. Miss Eldon, he asked if she's an untidy woman, and she is so untidy and slapdash. <laughs> the <laughs> word slapdash, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, but it's somebody to do with Anne Meredith. Yes, something to do. Okay. And I don't know what that means, but I feel like and it should Poirot mean something. knows something. He's already gotten that far somehow without even talking to Miss Meredith. Yeah, which is interesting. I don't know what this untidy clue is, but it's there. It's gonna be. It's gonna annoy me. If I hope it comes back. It will. It most certainly will. We can count on that. So, what is Poro here from Miss? Luxmore. This is Luxmore. He's investigating the murder that uh, Despard supposedly committed. Yeah, he was off somewhere in the colonies with some professor. He was off and in his wife. South America. They were. He was like yeah. helping guide them, um, because the professor was interested in some sort of plants. I believe. Oh, uh, the professor supposedly got fever, mm-hmm. and died, and they buried him. Mm-hmm. But there is some rumors that actually no fever. He was shot. Dun dun dun. What? So then, um, he talks to Miss Luxmore, who's the wife, the wife, the widow. The, yes, technically widow, and she um, she confesses this story of of melodramatic romance between her and Major Despard. Yeah, and they never really came to each other and admitted it. They they were always very um, cordial to one another. Uh-huh. Um, but she knew, and I was like, oh, the woman's instinct, isn't it? Uh, gross. Love but, triangle. <laughs> so she knew. Um, and then at the very, on the day of his death, um, Major Despard and, and Miss the professor were arguing, and yeah. she came between them and said, no, no, stop, stop But then fighting. her husband, like, went after Major Despard, and so Major Despard shot the guy, the professor, out of self-defense. Mm-hmm. So he didn't mean to. But he shot the guy, and she was like, oh, what are we going to do? I don't want a scandal. People are going to talk about this. And she was and so, all, he was so noble, he wanted to turn himself in, but I told him, no, you can't possibly do that. So anyways, they decide to just say it was a fever, and they buried him. And they buried him. And everyone else who was along with them was uh, like, nah. Was very, they, were, they were compliant, basically. They yeah, but like, they sorry. decided not to tell. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's what she says has happened. But what's interesting is later... Next chapter. Next chapter. Major Despard 
bursts in and is like, no, 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 no. He bursts Let me into, tell you the real story. He bursts into poor Rose's house. Yeah. Um, and he's all like, don't listen to her. She's crazy. She's hysterical. She doesn't know what she's talking about. It's, that was a lie. This is the true version of events. And then his story is that they all got the fever, but the guy got it really bad. It was a very convoluted story, personally. But anyways, he's, like, gonna die for some reason because he's gonna he walk was, off a cliff? He was, like, yes, yeah, so he was, like, delirious, and he was just, like, wandering about. And, and so, so he was, like, going to this Major part of the river. was gonna save him by, like, shooting his foot so he, he wouldn't keep walking. Okay, so he was about to tumble into some very deadly part of the river, and Despard's like, oh, my God, he's so far away by now. I can't reach him even if I ran. Yeah. So I'm just gonna pick up my rifle shoot him in the leg and hope he hope he like trips and doesn't you know bleed to death yeah. or something um but then the woman comes out of the tent and, and she's, she's like, like you're trying to kill him no don't and she tugs on his arm and so and when he, he shoots <laughs> he hits him in the back and goes right through his heart and kills him both very dramatic scenes. very dramatic actually. but yes. what's so interesting is we got two stories right very different events mm -hmm. and we have to believe one of them who was telling the truth what do you think Poirot says he believes Desmond. Yes, Poirot did you. it, but Poirot could be lying. But Poirot. I I, okay, but the lady did say like we never admitted our love to one another. We we, we, we yeah. never we're even on a first name basis. And he's Desmond says there was never love, ever. Yes. So she could have misinterpreted it. Then again, blaming the woman for misinterpreting something is like so common. Like why? Um, yeah. And. At first, when I read it, I didn't want to believe Major Despard, because I don't like him. <laughs> but then, but he, there's something about it, and with Poirot kind of being like, I believe you, I was like, mm, okay, now I'm kind of thinking Despard probably tell the truth. But then we're here, and I was like, oh, I actually feel like Poirot is lying to Despard's face. I think, I don't know what makes you think oh, that. Oh, I don't but, know why, but I just feel it. Okay, I think that Poirot <laughs> went to Mrs. Luxmore... Because he knew that would get Despard to come to him. I think Ooh. he he wasn't at all trusting um, Mrs. Luxmore at all. Um, so I think he was just using that to bait Major Despard. Really? How did Despard know that? I have no idea. But you know, really, that's my that's my guess. But I, what I found really interesting was that at the beginning of this chapter, mm -hmm. Poro goes into some shop. And he buys 19 pairs of expensive, fine stockings. Oh, yeah. And the ladies behind the counter are like, you're crazy. What? What? And they're really expensive, too. <laughs> and, like, so, so thin that they'll just break easily. And he's yeah. like, nope, I'm getting my 19 pairs right now. Are they for him? No! <laughs> they, of course, expect, they, they, of course, assume that it's for his, like, his Is he wife. buying them for Anne? To give to her? I have no he idea. When talks to her? Oh, oh wait, did he give them to Miss Lux? He didn't give them to anybody. That was after he interviewed Mrs. Oh. Luxmore, right before Major Despard Very, first in. Yeah. But that's an interesting theory. You think he's gonna give it to Anne? As like a gift as he oh, meets was, with her? I was gonna say like to give her like a fright and be like, you murdered someone with stockings once or something. You're right. Maybe they're maybe they're gonna be part of his big reveal. <laughs> yes. I've been so excited for the big reveal. <laughs> there better be a big reveal. Bigger, big reveal and stockings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Good choice of words. Um, unintentional, <laughs> unintentional pun. I apologize. <laughs> Never apologize. That humor is just Yeah, Alyssa lovely. loves puns. <laughs> I love puns. If it was good enough for the bard or bardess, good enough for me. I think it's interesting. Yes. In the last chapter. Whichever story you believe, Despard's or Miss Looks something, um, either way, he murdered a guy. Mm -hmm. Kind of. He did. He but didn't did. mean to, right? He killed somebody. He, not necessarily yeah. murder, not intentionally. Either way. And so he's, first of all, the only person that's um, admitted to it mm -hmm. in some way. And we know, like, exactly why he would want to kill Mr. Shaitana. Shaitana. Whatever. <laughs> like, we know because Mr. Shaitana could have had, has mixed Lux whoever's story. Uh -huh. And is going to tell people about it, right? And then, so, we're at the point where with him, we just have to trust his word. It made me feel like it wasn't him. Because, you know, for him, because everything's there's laid less out mystery. there. Yeah. There's not as much mystery. All his cards are on the table, essentially. His cards are on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, so we, we can close the book on on Roberts and Despard. Is that what we're saying? 
And that's what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think <sighs> Miss Lorimer, I feel like something sneaky going on there, but I don't think she murdered anybody. I think she's got some other use in this plot, okay? But she is very mysterious. I'm she sure is Mr. mysterious. Could, could pull but that, like, I don't think she murdered anybody. But if we find oh, out wait, later... Oh, wait, what if she's the... I would only think... Mm, I would only think there's a chance she murdered Mr. Shaitana, mm. but she didn't murder somebody in the past. You think that's her first murder? Yes. <laughs> but then what, what is it that Shaitana is holding over her that would make her murder him? Nothing. Then why would she murder him? She did it for somebody else. She did it for Anne. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've never met. So I feel they? like there, there, that's the twist. <laughs> I'm pulling up random theories here. Lots of twists in But now. anyways, the person it's most likely, we're still on Anne. Still going for Anne, yeah. Yeah. Rooting for yeah. Anne. She did it. Also, though, with, if you're comparing crimes, right? Mm -hmm. And you're saying their past crime looks like their new crime, right? Mm -hmm. I think that does put light on Mr. Shaitana. Because if you believe Miss Luxmore's story, right, there was some kind of love triangle going on. Mm -hmm. And Des Ford has some kind of love thing triangle with <laughs> Anne and uh, Rhonda. Rhoda. Okay, Rhoda, whatever. But, but it was only, it was only after he met them, of course. Oh, yeah. He had to have met them first. <laughs> You're poking the only reason he met them was because of Shaitana. You're poking all the holes in my theory. <laughs> um, I it's just saw love, and then I saw love, and I was like, oh, my God, that's the same murder. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think, if anything... Yeah, no, that it, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it seems that Anne's reaction mm -hmm. to both um, mention of Shaitana's death and then mm -hmm. also the previous death she is the, the fact. The fact that Rhoda thinks she. that she is disturbed by um, m something Mrs. Oliver said about poison. Mm -hmm. I mean, she might have just been uneasy about Mrs. Oliver's presence because she could be guilty, or it could have been the thing about the poison. But either way, she has the same reaction. Either way, or she's, if she's guilty, either way. But okay, but if Anne murdered that lady, which let's say she probably did, yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean she murdered Mr. Shaitana. I, I don't know. Again, I'm just waiting for that that no. moment when Poro was like, "What did you see in the room?" Oh, me, who was wandering around for like five minutes, looking at everything. I saw nothing. It was because five my minutes. vision was clouded by the act that I was about to commit, <laughs> that I had committed, that I wish I never committed. And then I returned to the table, my hands shaking. The doctor sees because, of course, he's used to recognizing <laughs> symptoms in people. But they never put two and two together. Or Miss Lorimer, <laughs> she, you know, she went to talk to Mr. Shaitana. Maybe she went to talk to him, found out he was dead, but was like, "I know it's Anne. I'm not gonna say anything." Ooh, ooh. Maybe it gets better and better. I hope so. These are all our just <laughs> wild, <laughs> wild theories. Wild theories. It's weird remember. that Colonel Race doesn't have much of a role. Oh yeah, he's like totally sidelined. He's just <laughs> But I'm totally fine with that. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my question. I have a question for you. Yes. If Anne turns out to be the murderer, do you think Despard is gonna get with her friend Ro <gasps> Rhoda? Rhoda. <laughs> Rhoda. Do you okay. think that's gonna happen? Um or do you think that they're all gonna just, he's gonna be like, whoa, I I like this girl, but she ended up being a murderer. I gotta, like, change some stuff. I think, okay, at first I was gonna say he was gonna stick up for her and be like, no, like, it's, it's, he's just gonna try to prove her innocence or try to protect her in some way. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, like he did with Miss Luxmore. Well, he wasn't protecting her, he was protecting himself. Sort of. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. I mean, I'm I don't know. I'm trying to find connections. <laughs> yes. Um, but, I don't know. I mean, I was thinking that they were going to end, get together by the end of the novel. Yeah, but... which you would think they would, uh -huh. but if you're, like, looking at her being the murderer, you're like, hmm. Maybe he'll just Many of her it. books end at the end with some people, like, you You got the happy couples, you know? Mm -hmm. They don't get married, per se, like, in, like, a lot of other, like, musicals and stuff that end with the marriage. Or, like, in Mysterious Affair and Stuff. <laughs> oh, that ends with the... 
That's wow, right. spoilers! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But um, but you do like people do get coupled off. They're like yes. it's happy. They're together. Yes, they're together. Just, just and so this course. book, if if we're gonna have a coupling, it's got to be with Mister Despard because. Yeah, because he's the young guy. Yeah. The young I didn't guy. know he was young. I, well, I had to, like, reinterpret my vision of him. I said that last time. He's it's not, okay. he's not, he's not, like, the fatherly no, superintendent but, battle. So he's supposedly uh, younger, and, um, um... Anyways, so do you think he's gonna end up with Anne or Rhonda? Rhoda. Rhoda. Uh, I... Maybe it's gonna be none of them, but... It could be neither. It could be neither. If you had to choose... Between neither Rhoda or Anne. Okay, now we're just. What's your best guess? <laughs> guess or preference? Guess. 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 I don't know. Preference. Guess. Ugh. I'd say yeah. I don't know. Or Anne. Preference. Probably still Anne, but also Rhoda because she is cool. And she, is cool. she does seem like a better fit, but at the same time, I could care less about their love lives. I want to know yeah, who's better. <laughs> what, what? What about you? I don't like him. <laughs> You're just like, I'd rather you just... Go yeah, I'd rather neither. I'd rather one of them's the murderer, which is pretty likely. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm just... I'm just excited to, to figure out who the murderer is. Me too. Yeah, I'm excited to read on. So, catch us later on the Christie Club.